This is a, a really uh, enormous, powerful muscle. It's actually the most powerful muscle in the body. And it's interesting, evolutionary, that the gluteus maximus got stronger as we became more vertical. So it's very much a muscle that is designed for propulsion once you're vertical. The gluteus maximus, so if I uh, just pop the skeleton down, the gluteus maximus, uh, what we have here is the sacrum, the pelvis, which is the ilium, and the spine. Now the gluteus maximus attaches along the rim of the iliac crest and then extends further along the sacrum. So it runs from here down, if I just lower, lower that a tad, down into this area to about there. That's the beginning, uh, that's the gluteus maximus. So it starts, the gluteus maximum starts from about here, runs across like that, and comes to about here. And that's uh, running along the outside of the uh, sacrum. It then runs like this, and it runs in the curve of the bottom, like that, junk like this, following the curve of the bottom. And it joins into a fascinating structure, which is here and running down your leg. It's the fascia lata. So the muscle itself joins into a thick fibrous band which runs down the side of your leg so that the muscle itself as it contracts will pull your leg backwards and so it's a, an extensor of the of the hip joint and as such its action it's, it's got a very firm attachment bony attachment at the top but at the bottom the pull of the muscle isn't straight to the bone but is mod modified by tension all the way up the the femur here very fascinating muscle so um, the muscle is it, it works if you pull your leg backwards so it helps you propel yourself forward if you're sitting or squatting as you stand up the muscle that does the standing up or the propelling as you jump forward is your gluteus maximus so it's a huge power muscle and as you land as you land you would keep going forward except your gluteus maximus will tighten and check rein any further forward movement. So these are the primary functions of this huge muscle. As a power muscle, it gets triggers and the triggers can be troublesome, but it's interesting when you look at trigger points in uh, myofascial uh, problems in, in, in your body, the majority of Trigger points occur in posture muscles that are primary, not power muscles, but posture muscles. So glute max certainly gets triggers, but they're not as uh, off. When they're there, they're very troublesome. And the triggers, there are actually three triggers. The first is along here, which is in the thickest part of the muscle. So the trigger occurs around this area. The second is in the free edge of the muscle. So here, there. And the muscle itself, as a lot of the big, um, powerful muscles of the body, th it has a free edge, like the latissimus dorsi, uh, like your pectoralis major, these muscles, and like the trapezius, these muscles have a, a free edge which is just how the design goes. So the second trigger is here, and the third trigger is further lateral like that.
Now, this trigger sits over the sitting bone, the ischial tuberosity. And one of the symptoms of, of trigger points in the glute max is that it's really uncomfortable to sit because this muscle gets squeezed onto, this trigger gets squeezed onto the ischial tuberosity. So the way you treat glute max, and glute max is because superficial muscle is actually quite easy to find the, the uh, fine trigger points. The muscle fibers run in this way, they curve around. And so as you, if you're searching for the trigger, you're running across the long axis. You're feeling, you'll find, because it's a big strong muscle, you'll find absolutely easy to feel little guitar strings. Once you find the guitar string, you search for the trigger, you'll feel it as a thickening, and then you will treat it. And this trigger gives you pain locally and comes across the sacrum. This trigger also refers up and down slightly, and the final little trigger over the ischial tuberosity is local. So this trigger you find by actually squeezing and lifting the free edge. And you, you find the trigger in the free edge. This you find by pressing straight down and in. The treatment is, if we were to choose any, we'll choose this ischemic pressure, finding the point, pressing hard enough to cause pain, backing off, he's breathing and relaxing, I'm slowly increasing the pressure, we're in eye contact, and gradually as I push in, the trigger just dissipates under my finger. This one, squeezing between that one, pushing directly on. You can use cold, and you start from the origin, run over the trigger, and you're wanting to include the pain zone, so you run like this, over the trigger, down to the insertion. You do two or three runs. Okay, then having, having done that, this muscle is an extensor, so the way you stretch it is you flex your leg. Can, can I ask you to hold this? You pull that as high up as you can go. Can you go further? That's very good. So you stretch it as far as possible. And then you can actually, in this, you can actually do another run or two of your cold in maximal stretch. You take a breath in, holds his breath for the count of six, breathe out. And then you just don't breathe in again and gradually you should be able to increase the stretch of that muscle using, there we go, that's, that's nice, using post isometric stretch. Great. And then you relax. We bring heat, pop the wheat bag on, leave the wheat bag on for a good five to ten minutes so that you've got a nice red bottom and then you do the same stretch again.